And now we're going to color the collie dog with the Copic markers. And for this piece, we're going to use W5, W3, W1, E17, E13, YR24, YR21, and Y18. Now to start with, I am going to use the YR21, and I'm going to circle in the area of the nose here that I want to have a golden color using the edge of my marker I'm going to color in and keep my leading edge wet so I'm going to keep going over the edge of my marker where I've just been and that way I'm keeping my area wet so I'll get the best blending Once you get that color circled in, I'm going to gently flick a little bit of that down into the rough here so that it blends in to the lower part. I'm going to come in now with my Y18 and I'm going to flick a little bit of that Y18 into areas where I want some shading under the edge of the ear under the eye the brow under the chin along the ridge of the nose And then I'm going to come in with my YR24 and I'm going to flick some more shading in where I want the darkest shadows to fall. And very, very gently with just the tip of my pen, my marker, I'm going to flick that in there. Now I'm going to come into the white part of the rough here and I'm going to start with my lightest color which is my W1 and I'm going to flick gently where that gold on the head meets the rough and then down on some of the tips on the bottom part. You're always going to want to flick with the direction of the growth of the hair so you get the most lifelike result. I'm going to take the W3 and just gently flick in where I want a little bit more shading. and then come in with your darkest, your W5, and just very gently with the very tip of your pen, flick in just the tiniest bit where you want the very darkest shadows to fall. And now we're gonna move on to the body. And again, we're going to use the same process, the YR21. And we're going to circle in. Keeping our leading edge wet until we have our whole area of the body and tail here filled in because this is all one section. use the edge of your marker tip or your marker nib or you can use the very tip in the tight areas.
once you get a nice coverage with no light places. We'll move on to add a little bit of the Y18. Flick that in where you want your shadows. Again, going with the growth of the hair. If you want a very lifelike animal, you really need to flick with the growth of the hair. So where it's curving around his hip here, and his leg, you're going to want to curve your flicking motion to follow that pattern. Come in with your YR24. Again, you're going to flick where you want your shadows. Very gently using just the very tip of your marker under the edge of that rough. So you get the illusion of dimension like it's sticking out above or past the body and the other hair. So wherever you want to see a little bit darker shadow is where you need to place that color. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of E13. Flick that in those shaded areas again. Basically you're just subtly building up your layers of your color and your shadow to get the most lifelike appearance. Animals have a lot of colors in their fur and in their hair. And they're not complicated to color, you just need to know to go with the growth of the hair. Flick a little bit of that E13 up here in a couple areas on the face as well. And then we're going to come in with our final dark color here which is our E17 and just the very 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 tip where we want the very darkest shadow. So if we really give that illusion of dimension we're going to flick that dark color behind the leg, under the ruff, the bottom base of the tail, the leg here where the fur overlaps the leg, bottom edge of the foot, wherever you want that very darkest shadow to appear. And then <clears throat> we will come back in and we will use our W1 to flick in some shadows on these front legs. Each animal is going to be slightly different colored. Um, no two dogs, no two cats, none of them ever look exactly the same. So there is no absolute right and wrong to how you color your animal because there's so many variations in the wild. Okay. Now we're going to flick this W3 in for a little bit deeper shadow. And then come in with our last color, which is the W5. And just very, very gently flick it in where we want our darkest shadow to fall. And 
that's how we color our collie dog.